My name is Nadia Amrashi. I'm a locum dispenser and I study pharmacy and I am a British Muslim. Medium caramel macchiato blonde roast, please. Should I get? Me medium caramel macchiato blonde roast. Thank you very much. Yeah. Anything else ready to eat? No, thank you. I grew up going to a private girls' school called St. Margaret's in Bushy. And then I went to a sixth form in Mill Hill called Cocktail Girls' School. And currently I'm studying pharmacy in the University of Hertfordshire. Um, whilst I study, I also work as a locum dispenser. I travel to many different pharmacies around the UK um, dispensing. And it's really helpful with my degree because it helps me gain insight on doing the job and learning whilst I go instead of just sitting in lectures, which is a good experience. I think the right path to me means knowing the difference between right and wrong and trying, staying true to yourself and your values and living in the way of Akhobay and the Quran and living as close as possible to those values. Even the time that we live, is, it's hard because being in the Western world is difficult with lots of trials and tribulations. Um, my parents, I think, are my biggest inspiration. They always, every Thursday, we have measures together. I grew up learning values about my religion and they really took their time like out of every day, like instead of watching TV or going about seeing my friends, they'd spend that time with me to teach me about my religion and. I think coming from my parents, it meant more than learning it from other people. Because if your family hold those values as well, then it holds closer to home, I feel. I think my parents are my biggest inspiration and they always advise me to do the best and whatever I do in life, do it in good intention and do it in the name of God. And I think always think about my actions beforehand, like how will it implicate me, how will it affect me in the future? Being a British Muslim does make me different to other people. Um, for work, I travel quite a bit to areas outside London and people tend to look at you a bit differently, especially in areas where there is a scarcity of Muslims around and you're kind of the only one. They'll be fixated on you. I went to this pharmacy in Didcot and I remember driving up there thinking, there's no person of colour around. No person that looks slightly remotely similar to me. And I walked into the pharmacy and the patients were quite racist. And a lot of people looked at me funny when I went to go get coffee. It was, it's difficult because you feel like an outcast and you feel like you don't belong, but you're still trying to live and you should be accepted the same way because I was born in this country, just like 
all of them and I still pay my taxes and I sh have every right to be here just like they do. I think most British Muslims achieve to have acceptance into society, to be able to graduate and get the jobs that they dream of and achieve that the most they want from this world. I think that being a British Muslim does hinder this for them because I know someone that using their Muslim name, they couldn't get any jobs and that they had to actually change it to something that sounded a bit more acceptable or something that people could pronounce maybe a bit more easier. And then they would be able to get work. Actually, as soon as they did, they did get a job. When I was younger and I was looking for work, I think a few years back, it was a lot harder. I remember because I wore hijab, it wasn't seen as appropriate or professional to have that. And it was very difficult to find somewhere to work. So I think it is difficult for us and we do have hurdles in our way more so than other people. Islamophobia, I think, is the way the media has portrayed us. I think a lot of the negative media has given people a bad impression and we have to work twice as hard to change people's perceptions of us. I have quite a few non-Muslim friends and they're quite accepting of me. They don't really look at me as the Muslim girl. It's more like just Nadia. The, it's not the girl who doesn't eat for 30 days in a year or goes and prays five times a day. They're pretty easygoing and they're accepting. When I'm fasting, they understand. When I have to go pray, they understand. They don't look at me differently. Um, it is difficult when we go out though. I have to kind of put my input and be like, I don't want somewhere with any alcohol. I don't want somewhere that doesn't serve halal meat. I mean, I don't mind going to places that doesn't have halal meat because I can eat fish or vegetables. But it is difficult to explain like, Sometimes it is easier when people are like you and you can just, you don't have to really explain this is what I need, but it's refreshing that they understand, I think. I started wearing hijab when I went into sixth form. My parents never forced me into wearing it. So when I started wearing it, it was more of a love and understanding of what hijab meant and why would I need to wear it instead of just wearing it because my parents told me to. And I think that's why I have such a passion for it now. It is my identity and it's who I am. And when I wear it, I have such love and respect for hijab that I would respect it in such a way. So it's not just a chore that my parents told me to do, it's something that I did out of my own will and my own understanding of what hijab meant and what modesty is. five times a day and it's difficult especially with my work to pray in the workplace there's usually not somewhere that I can go especially in a pharmacy there's not a hidden place some, some places are really accommodating and let me pray in the consultation room but other places will look at me a bit funny and be like um no and at uni usually we pray in a study room it can be a bit difficult there is a prayer room designated but it's very far away from the library or from any other place so in cold weathers and stuff people don't usually like walking there but we usually find like a silent study room and we pray quickly it can be a bit awkward if people are walking by and they look in and they find it a bit strange but usually if i make the effort it's easy
a time that you can sustain from things in your daily life and really reflect. I think it's a time that you can try and change something that you want in your life. You have that time and capability that you can strengthen your willpower because we are fasting 18 hours in a day and having the willpower to not eat or drink and sustain for anything haram, like really putting that power into motion and strengthening our iman, like working on religion rather than worldly life. Um, I look forward to Ramadan because it's a time that I can spend with my family and go to the mosque, spend time with my friends. And it's a time that I can reflect on my life and instead of eating, going out all the time that I usually do, it's the time that I can use on something else that I can focus on religion. I think what's difficult in Ramadan is when I'm working, sometimes I do 10 hour shifts and not eating or drinking is really hard, especially in the summer, because we have like 18 hours of not drinking anything and it's really hot and I have to concentrate at work. And it's, it's really sometimes dangerous because I can make mistakes and stuff and it's patient safety. I think it is, if I don't get enough sleep, so sometimes I actually don't have suhoor, like I don't get enough sleep. And then I go and I'm, I struggle throughout the day. So working in Ramadan is really hard. And I think exams as well, like exams are gonna be yeah, this year. Yeah. So it's gonna be really difficult to revise and concentrate. Um, I think my weakness is probably water. Like drinking is really, like I get so thirsty in the heat and like in the long hours. I've met friends in the masjid. I met Noor at the masjid. And um, we actually met here quite a while ago. Yeah, I think 2012. Yeah, 2012 for Eid al-Ghadir event. Yeah, and ever since then, I think we've gone to the Masjid for Maharam together and Ramadan together. And we break our fast together. We have yeah. iftar together, we do suhoor. And the Yeah, basically my, uh, my, my spiritual body. Yeah, we help each other strengthen our imam. And like, I think it helps having someone there for you someone who's similar to you and understands. Mm. I think we have same spiritual, we say we have same spiritual faith and we both have strong faith. So yeah. we understand each other. It's like we go through the same phases at the same time. Yeah. yeah, and we can do it together, which is important. We go, we pray in the masjid together, like yeah. quite regularly. In Ramadan, it's nice cause like you can come and then break your fast and pray. And it's always lovely to do it with a friend. Ramadan is a time where you can get closer to God, I think, because you have more time. You don't spend it eating like we do mostly. Yeah. Um, you have more time to focus on religion and read the Quran and like really understand why you're doing it. So it's a time to get closer to God. Usually during Ramadan, I set myself a challenge at the beginning of the month of something that I'm going to improve on. I feel like in Ramadan, I try to do my best to abstain from anything haram and I try to implement that into my day-to-day -day life anyway. So I try not to like say, even if it's like little white lies or something like in Ramadan, I would avoid doing that completely. Like, and in your day-to-day, -day, if it's just telling your friend, like you don't want to go out, but you say you're busy because you, you don't want to hurt their feelings. Mm -hmm. But in Ramadan, like that would be seen like that's a big thing for me because like that could break your fast. So I think doing it in day-to-day -day life is trying to keep those practices up. You start to think about the little things that could actually be haram or like implement you and can impact your life and your faith. Being a British Muslim, to me is my identity. I grew up from a background where my mum was Christian, Greek Orthodox, and she converted to Islam. And my dad is originally Iranian. Uh, half of my family didn't really accept that we were Muslim. And it was very difficult to get accepted by them. A lot of times we just didn't really speak to them. I think it was hard to have even your own family turn against you. It's 
becomes increasingly harder, like going to school and stuff. When I was younger, I was in a predominantly Jewish area. I went to a school that there was barely any Muslims. I think I was the only Muslim in my year. And things like Ramadan and other things were hard to communicate with other students. They would look at me a bit funny, like, why aren't you eating? I remember there during Ramadan in the canteen and stuff, people, they made me sit in the canteen with them because I was the only Muslim and they couldn't leave me alone. And people would actually eat in front of me and kind of torment me. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I can't eat right now. Um, it was hard to keep my faith, but I think my parents brought me up with such strong faith that even in times where people would look at me a bit funny and being different, I still held on to that. And I held on to the identity that this is who I am and it didn't matter if people looked at me funny. That it meant more to me being Muslim and being proud of being Muslim and showing people that this is a different side. We're not like others and we're not how we're portrayed in the media. And that was important to me to show people that where they're caring people, the generous people that do everything in the name of Islam for good reasons. I'm proud to be a British Muslim. I'm proud that I can say I live my life with good intentions and I do it in the name of Islam in a good way.